Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the Farm Vlog today. Today we're gonna to be talking about making an informed purchase decision when buying your first tractor, or if you're thinking about buying a new tractor for your piece of property. We're gonna take you around each one of these tractors. We're gonna talk about the horsepower. We're gonna talk about the features a little bit, and we're gonna talk about how to help you make an informed decision when purchasing your first tractor or purchasing a new tractor for your piece of land. Whether you have two acres or whether you have 200 acres, we're going to walk you through these tractors. We're going to have some fun today. All right. Stony. From Stony Ridge. Stony Ridge Farm. So let's start with the extreme first. This is the John Deere 310D. We bought this tractor several months ago and we bought it for a great deal. We're going to be using it on the farm to help maintain the land. In other words, we need to dig ditches, we need to dig foundations for our home. We've got a whole lot of work here on our 200 acre farm that we need this John Deere 310D for. We need to clean up our land and that's what we're going to be using this for, construction and land cleanup. Do you need this on a large farm? It's questionable. Do you need this on a farm that's 25, 30 acres? No, you don't. You need to rent this machine. This is not a machine that you need to purchase. This is something you need to rent maybe once a year, once every two years, and get all your activities together that you plan to do with the backhoe, rent it for a day for 300 bucks, get your work done and turn it back in. If you've got a large piece of property and you're clearing land, then this might be something that you'd be interested in. This is a 74 horsepower John Deere tractor. It's not a farm tractor. This is a workhorse for clearing land, for cleaning up your property. Now let's move on to the John Deere 5065E. It's my favorite, most utilized tractor of this group of tractors. This is our John Deere 5065E tractor. It doesn't have the loader on it, but it does have a loader system. I totally recommend no matter what size piece of land, you get a tractor that's a little bit bigger than you need and you get a loader on that tractor that's an indispensable item to have on a farm tractor nowadays now back in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s they didn't have the technology and hydraulics like we have right now and it was very very expensive to get into a loader system and they were often not very reliable nowadays tractors with a loader are indispensable and four-wheel drive is almost a must if you have any sort of hills or you're expecting any sort of rain on your farm so four-wheel drive is almost a must what you pay extra for four-wheel drive will pay for itself over the years trust me this is a 5065e this is our go-to tractor for everything this is mowing hay this is bush hogging this is pulling a three bottom plow this is baling hay this tractor is the workhorse of the farm we've had it about four years it's got about yeah, close to a thousand hours on it it has been absolutely indispensable a tough as nails tractor when i get on this thing i know what i'm getting into i know what it feels like and it's just part of me i really really like this tractor now we have in the neighborhood of 110 acres of open workable land i say open workable land as in what we're plowing what we're disking what we're mowing for hay and what we're bush hogging that's what you need to put into consideration so if you buy 40 acres of land and you only have 10 open acres you probably don't need a tractor this big okay so you need to start looking in the 40 horsepower range which brings us to our next tractor. Moving along to our Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. This is a 44 horsepower two wheel drive tractor with a Perkins diesel engine in it. I totally recommend that if you're looking for a tractor that you look for a diesel powered tractor. That Perkins diesel you really can't go wrong with. Now let's talk a little bit about this tractor and why you should buy it and why you shouldn't buy it. So the 5065 I'm gonna say is good for somewhere between 60 to 100 acres of open land. 60 to 120 acres of open land land depending on what you're doing so depending on if you're pulling big disc harrows or big plows you might need a bigger tractor if you have 60 to 120 acres of open land now for the Massey Ferguson 240 say you have 40 or 50 acres of open land this would be a great tractor for you to use now do I recommend getting a tractor with a loader and buying a new tractor Absolutely. Do I recommend buying a newer model tractor with low hours? Absolutely. This tractor is our second tractor. In other words, I can hook up what I need to this tractor and use it and leave it hooked up all the time where I'm swapping implements all the time on the John Deere 5065. 
This tractor is the best second tractor I think you could get, but you need a loader. You really do need a loader. A lot of people might argue that down in the comments. That's okay. Tell me why you don't think you need a loader. Put it down there in the comments. So when you're buying a used tractor, you're looking at the overall condition. You want to make sure that you're getting a good price. You want to make sure that when you buy that tractor in five or 10 years, you can sell that tractor for around about the same price. Don't abuse it and you don't want one that's abused either. So take care of your equipment. Your equipment will take care of you and it'll hold its value. Now we're going to move over to my favorite little compact tractor and this is the Kubota B3350. So let's go check it out. This is the coolest little tractor. It's a Kubota B3350. It's a 33 horsepower four-wheel drive tractor with a loader system on it. This tractor belongs to Everything Attachments. It's a company out of Newton, North Carolina that makes tractor attachments in their custom factory. That's the wicked grapple that goes on the front of this tractor. It's super duper awesome and on the back is a cultipacker that's made here in the USA in North Carolina so that's pretty neat. This little tractor is a workhorse but it's a small workhorse. It leaves a small footprint meaning that you can get in your yard and you can work around your yard you can work around your house with this tractor but it's not a farm tractor I would say. It's not a tractor that a guy with 50 acres needs to maintain and work and mow his farm. It's a guy with five or ten acres of cleared land that needs to keep it mowed and needs to maintain. It's a guy with a nice big garden that needs to till it up or plow it up. It's a great tractor for a smaller piece of property. Again, I'll say, when you've got a piece of property and you're buying a new tractor, err on the side of getting a tractor a little bit bigger than you think you'll need. This has been a great tractor for working around the house. Our yard area here is somewhere in the neighborhood of five acres. This is my around the house, getting things done tractor. The big tractor is my work in the pastures tractor. The Massey Ferguson 240 is my great second tractor, using it for maintaining the driveway or digging fence post holes. You can put an implement on there and leave it and have a great second tractor. And let me tell you, unhooking and hooking up implements all day long in a tractor is a pain in the butt. So if you can have a second tractor, it's totally worth it. Over here, this big old 310D, we've yet to use it on the farm, but we got such a good deal on it, I know I'll never ever lose any money. The thing about buying a good tractor, either a good used tractor or a good new tractor, is they hold their value very, very well. You might lose a little bit initially as they go off the lot, but if you buy a brand new tractor, you'll always know how it was maintained and how it was cared for. Now let's talk a little bit about pricing. The 310D in this condition has about 2,200 hours. You can probably expect to pay anywhere between 15 and $20,000 for it. It's a two wheel drive model. If it were four wheel drive, I'd say you'd probably pay 22 to $28,000 for it. If it had a cab on it, probably closer to 28,000. The 5065E brand new was around $34,000 with the loader system and we bought a bunch of implements with the tractor stick around for a future video we'll take you around and we'll talk to you about the three or four most important implements for you to get when you're first starting your homestead or your farm or you're just buying a piece of property this little tractor right here i bought from a neighbor it had low hours on it completely restored beautiful tractor i know the track record it has had two owners we paid eighty five hundred dollars for that tractor and it'll last us a lifetime now this little bx tractor right here. This is a 2014 model. I think you could probably expect to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of eighteen dollars to $25,000 for this kind of tractor. Brand new, this tractor probably cost $24,000. So you can see over four years, this is 2018, over four years, you really haven't lost any value in this tractor. They're great, great machines. Guys, I hope this helped you a whole lot in making your decision to purchase your tractor. A few final points I'd like to make are be sure you buy the tractor that's a little bit bigger than what you think you'll need. You'll never regret that. You'll always regret buying a tractor that's too small. I can tell you that right now. If you're looking at getting a nice used tractor, ask for service records. Get all the records you possibly can. Ask about the previous owners. If anybody knows it, if you're buying it from an individual, they should have service records on that tractor. Look for a tractor with a loader, okay? Look for a tractor that you can utilize for many, many, many purposes. This tractor right here, I can mow with it, I can scrape with it, I can dig post holes with it, but I can't lift anything with it. I can't stack round bales with it, I can't move dirt with it. So 
think about that. If you're even thinking about composting or growing a garden, you need a tractor with a loader on it. So think about that for sure. The backhoe is kind of an extra. If you've got a large piece of land and you're clearing up some property, you can buy that backhoe. You can use it for five years, sell it, and get the same amount of money back out of it as long as you don't break it. Guys, I hope this quick little video has helped put together a few pieces of information you need to have when you're making an informed tractor purchase decision. This is a major purchase and it's something that really needs to be thought out. This tractor right here is a geared tractor. I prefer a geared tractor when I'm plowing, when I'm disking, when I'm mowing, when I'm baling. All of that I feel very comfortable with a geared tractor. This is also a geared tractor. In other words, you put it in gear and it goes one constant speed. This little Kubota is a hydrostatic drive tractor and it does a great job. If you're working with a smaller piece of property, a hydrostatic drive tractor is super duper awesome. If you're working on a larger piece of property, you better make sure that thing has cruise control because you just don't want to have to mash your foot down for hours and hours and hours on end as you're driving that tractor. When I'm out here mowing, I'll be mowing for six or eight hours at a time, and I certainly don't want to push a pedal down like I would have to do on that tractor. So just a little bit of food for thought. For a piece of land bigger than about 20 acres, I don't want to mash a foot pedal. I want to put it in gear and go. If you're cleaning up brush and you're working hard around your house and in your garden, this is a great little tractor. Great second tractor, perfect farm tractor for anywhere between 60 and 120 acres, and just an awesome digging machine. Guys, thanks a lot. I hope this helped you a whole lot. Don't worry, when you go to the tractor dealer, they won't have a whole lot of information. They expect you to already know what you want when you walk in the door. So maybe this helped. Cool? Thanks a lot. Be sure to pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the little bell icon down there. I'm going to do a video here very shortly on the top three or four implements that I would choose if I had to keep only three or four implements on my farm. The top three you need to buy when you're thinking about getting some land. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. Thanks a lot. We'll Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife.